Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, maybe, finally, we have a few solutions to kill that darn hum that is coming from your gear, from your loudspeakers, that is making you crazy, that it's making you think, maybe I should just give up. Don't, we have some solutions coming up. Okay guys, we're gonna go through three main stages, plus a special stage dedicated to turntables, okay? There's a lot to say, I just wanna make a disclaimer here, I'm not an expert on AC, DC voltage, it's very complicated, I have some in information, some solutions, and especially I'll put also some important links, useful links, in the video description here below. Okay guys, let's proceed. Okay, so we're mainly dealing with two types of hums. Uh, first of all, we, we, we must address the, the, the type of frequency that usually are, uh, are coming from our loudspeaker or, or from our gear. We're mainly focusing on the 50 or 60 hertz. And let's try to listen to something like that. Okay, and other times instead we have something a little more irritating that it's around 100, 120 hertz. Let's listen. Okay, so uh, apart from the frequencies, which you probably recognize the problem you're having, we have two main types of hums. The first one, which is a little more easy to recognize, to understand, to solve, is more like uh, what PS Audio calls mechanical type of uh, hum. Uh, what is that? Well, it's mainly due to the transformers inside your gear. So it's not gonna come from your loudspeakers, it's gonna come from a specific component. Put your ear close and you'll hear that it's coming from inside something. At that point, uh, and that is due mainly to the uh, the poor design of, a, of the power transformer or if you ha are having some problems on the DC line, which is called lamination rattle. In any case, uh, it's something dedicated, mainly coming from your transformer in most cases. And at that point, <laughs> there's not that much you can do. I mean, you're going to need to substitute that or, or do some improvement on that specific type of gear. But apart from this type of mechanical hum, we're gonna mainly focus on the most common of all, the ground loop hum, the one that is really uh, disturbing all of us hi-fi enthusiasts and audiophiles. And this type of hum is coming from your loudspeakers because there is a loop, a closed circuit somewhere of, uh, of the signal, uh, which is coming through your loudspeakers so you, you can easily understand if it's that type of hum. And most probably, as I said, it is. So, let's start. First stage. Okay, so the first thing to do in, before going a little more in depth is to immediately detach your uh, TV screen power cable, if you have it. A lot of people do have their power screen next to their hi-fi uh, system. Un disconnect that and see if that is already changing something. If it is, like in most cases happens, then that's the problem. Especially when it's on, you may gonna have some problems there. Now, you also need to, to, to see if other components are connected to the TV itself. At that point, you also have to disconnect, uh, connect, disconnect the different components connected directly to the TV, not to the amplifier and all the rest of the system because that's completely different to see if it's something else coming from that. Most probably, it's the TV. Also remember another big issue comes from the transformers 
not high quality transformers of your computers, your PC, your Mac, whatever it is. If you're using a power socket, a power strip, and you're also putting your computer, try to detach that sometimes that will already help a lot. Okay. If it's the TV and you don't have any other solution uh, where to put the power cable of your TV, first of all, ch try to change the power cable of the TV because you never know. A lot of times it's the power cord itself. And this is uh, a good valuable tip for any kind of hum and any kind of component that is producing hum. A lot of times it's the power cables or even the video cables that signal we're talking more about power now so uh, try to do that if you can not all televisions have a detachable power cord if that is a problem try to change sock wall socket power strip try to, to flip your source of power from different outputs if that is still ain't doing nothing then you're gonna have some issues and the best solution at that point is to use a cable tv isolation transformer okay you're still having hums most probably, because I mean, that is something renowned. Let's pass to our second stage. Let's proceed. Okay, for our second stage, now try to disconnect one by one the power cord of each component connected to your preamp or your amp, if it's an integrated amp. And obviously the power cords of the preamp and the power amp or integrated amp itself. Okay, but that's in the end, because then you're gonna have a big problem there. Then, then the problem is inside one of them. Uh, no, try first every single component, one by one, okay? And if it is one of these, the first thing is to try to change the power cord. Remember, that is one of the main issues. Not only because there may be shielding issues, but even poor connections, a loose wire, there's lots of reasons. So that it's always a good idea, if possible, if detachable, to change, to substitute the power cord and see if that changes, if that makes any improvement. If not, try changing power strip, wall socket. That's always a good idea because what is happening? Many times we have this loop because we have components connected between each other with interconnects or other cables, but they are getting their power from different outputs, different sockets, wall sockets, okay? So that creates the loop and you have to interrupt it. Now I know you guys, I know you are audiophiles. You have your dedicated wall socket, you have your dedicated power strip, you have your dedicated power conditioner, which should help as well, actually, if you're using a, using a power conditioner. So I know that's your last resort because I agree, if you put all these components together, you're gonna have some degradation in the sound quality. So that's your last choice. We all know that. If you don't, I'm telling you. But we must remember that that may solve this hum. So you're gonna have to decide the lesser evil at a certain point. In any case, try doing this, change the power cords, and if that does not work, change, change sockets or power strips, okay? If that doesn't do anything, Let's proceed to the next stage. So if you're still experience some hum in our third stage, try touching, moving gently the interconnects because sometimes they are also, uh, may be carrying some hum, some interference, maybe because of the shielding. Again, maybe because they got, they got loose, maybe because a part of the machines are not grounded correctly and they're touching with the cables. There's so many types of issues in fact refrain please from writing immediately no this is my this is my case what can i do because i don't know in most cases it is there is so many types again please watch this video take a look at the documents and, and um, websites and links i put in the video description and maybe you will find more info because i'm not that good uh, in resolving this. These are the things I did to resolve mine actually in the past, plus information I gather online and books. Okay, so uh, as I said, try the interconnects because that's sometimes the problem. If you're still not sure what's, ha what's happening or instead if you have identified a specific component, one solution, perhaps if you wanna uh, cut 
the bull's head, as we say in Italy, and um, solve the solution, for example, on a power strip where you have multiple elements connected, try using a cheater plug. Uh, what is that? Well, it's very simple. It takes away the ground. But that way, as you can imagine, you might get electrocuted if you have some problems with the, with the different gear and power cords. You're not protected anymore. So mind that. Plus, even your gear is not protected anymore uh, for, for any kinds of surge in the electrical power. So be careful. That must be, again, one of your last results or just a test to see if you ha you're having actually a, a, a loop because you're, you're breaking that loop if you disconnect the ground. But I do not recommend to do that unless, it, again, it's your last choice, your last definite solution because it is dangerous sometimes. Okay, so now let's take a look at the turntable, which in, at least in my experience is the one that gives more problems than any other one. Let's proceed. Let's see our special turntable stage. First of all, check the ground cable, obviously. Uh, most turntables have a specific dedicated ground uh, cable, little cable, that is connected from the turntable platter on a specific point, usually it's underneath, and it goes uh, to a specific little ground piece, pin, clamp, we could say, on the phono preamp, or your amp, even if that has one. So that needs to be connected. Although sometimes it may create other issues. So try, if you already have it connected, try to disconnect it. That sometimes helps. At least it doesn't eliminate completely the, the loop, but it attenuates the hum, the strength of the hum. Okay, so again, for turntables, <clears throat> another good idea is to check, touch, move, and obviously substitute, change the interconnects. A lot of times that is the problem. The interconnects from the turntable to the power preamp, if you have a power preamp, and the, obviously the cable going from the power preamp to the amp or the preamp, the true preamp. These two pair of cables, if you have this system, otherwise if you have an integrated phono preamp inside your turntable, just the, the one connected the turntable to the amplifier, receiver, etc., those may be uh, creating some problems. So try to exchange those to change them with another pair. That may be already a good idea, a good solution. Another important fact is try to moving away, I know this is difficult, the turntable. At least it'll help to, di to have a good diagnose. Because many times the turntable, but especially the cartridge, are very sensible to the, the rest of the gear around it, from the, uh, um, the magnetic fields that the other components may create. So try moving the turntable and hook it back and see if the hum is at, it has the same intensity. Sometimes it will, it'll continue. In other cases, instead, it'll just dramatically drop. So you're gonna have to need to move that component, which has a strong magnetic field. You're gonna have to individuate that one, understand which one it is, or move the turntable, obviously. Another good idea if you have a vintage turntable is to exchange the poles, reverse the, the poles of your uh, power cord itself. If you have a, a two-pole type that is especially present in, um, in in Europe, you just reverse it in the in the power socket, in the power strip, wherever it is, and see if uh, if it makes any difference. Sometimes it does. Another good idea is to change, as you can imagine, the power cord of your phono preamp. I mean, the phono preamp is one of the most sensible, one of the main pieces of gear in my experience that creates hum. So you gotta put attention to that. As I said, the interconnects and the power cable. In that case, you're probably gonna solve in 90% of cases your problem. Uh, again, sometimes the phono preamp is not isolated correctly. So a good idea is to move, beside, as we said before, the turntable, to move away the phono preamp itself, distant from the rest of your components, of the electrical parts, of the power cables, the power sockets, the power strips. That is very sensible. So, especially when you have a lot of gain, um, it's, it's a good idea to, to set it apart if it's not properly shielded. Another one last good idea, something we said already before, is to try to put the turntable 
uh, power cord, the phono preamp and possibly the amp on the same line, the same power strip or socket. At that point, you're probably going to solve a lot of stuff. I know you never, as I said before, having the, the, the amplifiers with uh, the, um, the, the amp with the phono preamp sometimes is not the best choice, but that you can still do that. It's not that bad. It's, it's worse when you put it together with a CD player or other more sensible components like that, okay? Or a, a DAC, a streamer, things like that. that. That really need to be separated. So I hope through all these stages, you found one of these solutions. Again, check the links I put in the video description because they go much more in depth. I just presented you the main issues that I had in my life and that I was able finally to solve. Please let me know if these have worked for you. Please have, let me know if you have solutions. Don't let me know if you have more problems. No, I'm just kidding. You can write them, but I'm not going to answer all of them because I'm sure a lot of people are going to grab their computer and start typing. Uh, this is my this is my problem. What can I do? I don't know, guys. It's very complicated. There's so many type types of situations of issues. We just saw the main ones. Thank you again for watching. And remember, music is born analog. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.